Greetings, sentient beings. This broadcast is not intended for children. There will be strong language and adult themes, and a lot of talk about excessive drinking. Well, not really. I don't drink excessively. I can stop right after the next one. Yeah, see? Me just got it under control. <laughs> okay, we got a bit of a lag between us and YouTube, I see. <clears throat> <coughs> What's new about that? <clears throat> I see Greg's got a new avatar for his um, YouTube. Look, look at that. Oh, yeah. I wish we could get a larger image of it there. A little bit. That's yeah. a pretty good. That's a pretty decent size. He appears yeah. to be a lovely, mm. handsome, mm. handsome dude. Hmm. Yeah, he's got that wise grandfather look. Fuck your grandfather stuff. <laughs> Just because we're old. <laughs> well, you know, I'm I'm old enough that a lot of the people who join us are their grandfathers are in my dating pool now. Oh, yeah, brainless steel commander is here. <laughs> so, today uh... somebody backed their truck into my truck, and that meant I couldn't get home within 14 hours and set an alarm until my employer can send someone to get me. Oh, crap. Does that mean you're going to be out of work for a while? And Demon Orb? Well, <clears throat> and Robert Manuel. I don't know who this is. Hello. Hello, we got somebody new here. Well, my favorite whiskey is uh, the Tullamore Dew. Though I usually go for or rum. And my favorite rum is so currently is the the Kraken Black Label. We're not talking about rum. We're talking about whiskey. I'm sorry. You'll just have to stop that. <laughs> well, my my default drink is uh, Windsor Canadian and ginger ale. My default drink is brown. Well, then the Windsor Canadian mm -hmm. qualifies. Yes, there's every other whiskey out there. I I have very little taste for um, hard spirits anymore. Yeah. I mean, I used to be able to... I mean, there are definitely some Scotch whiskeys that taste so damn peaty. Um, you feel like you got to go drink some and then plant some roses in your belly. Mm -hmm. um, but, geez, most of it just all tastes the same to me. Yeah. Burn, well, it burns the hell out of me, and, and I like it. <laughs> The Windsor is definitely not a sipping whiskey. It's a bit harsh, but with the sweet mixer, it balances well. The Tullamore Dew is pretty, it's pretty smooth. <clears throat> hey, Stephanie. The smoothest. Oh, I've hi. Ever had. What are we drinking? Whiskey and rum. Yep. Jenny was just okay, just well, I, I've got yes. neither, but I've got, uh, I've got a taste for some. Oh, well, we have to get out of here if you don't have any whiskey or rum. <laughs> Just kidding. Shit. There's something to store next door, but... You I know, got an empty whiskey bottle. Does that, does that count? I have an empty rum I bottle. Can, I emptied it myself. It only took, like, one night. <laughs> really? <laughs> well, well, that's, that's, you, you know that song, Whiskey Bottle Over Jesus? No. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. I think of it's course, Uncle talking Tupelo. about whiskey, I have to uh, plug my drink that I'm trying to get a trademark for. My okay. Fireball Tea. Mm. Or Dragon Ball Tea, rather. Which is my custom brewed home iced tea with a double shot of Fireball Cinnamon Whiskey. I like it. Sounds like a hell of a cocktail. 
yeah, it's good stuff. Next time I go to a party, I'm just going to bring a bunch of bottles of it. Now I just got to figure out what the hell I'm going to do with all these socks. Why is it strain the whiskey? Wait. <laughs> socks? What, is Molly, like, bringing you all your socks? or? No, uh, the Tullamore Dew whiskey I get, it comes with a free pair of socks, because it's the oh. it's one in this box, it's the cheapest one I can get out from the liquor store. So I end up with all these socks. I each time I buy a bottle. Is it is that whiskey mm. coming with a free pair of socks? Seems a little bizarre. Well, it's cheap. It was the cheapest bottle that they have of, of the stuff. Well, so. yeah. Okay. To to be fair, I'm not saying you know warm dry socks. I'm not saying they're the secret to happiness. But no mm -hmm. one is ever happy when they're wearing cold, wet socks. That's true. Well, I don't know. There was, a, there was this one time when I was camping. And the tent was really short. And so my feet had to like stick out somewhere. And the woman I was with was, was pretty hot. And then she got hot for me. And I got hot for her. And uh, yeah. we had a great time. But my <clears> feet <throat> were really cold and wet. It's... <laughs> Well, you know, there are compensations. Yeah, think, well, that's, I think that's you know, you were too at. distracted to think about your feet then. It was, it's a, it was a very memorable day. I ended up getting pregnant. <laughs> I imagine that would be rather memorable. <laughs> like, hey, wait a minute. <laughs> How about that? Surprise. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, that, that is one thing that it's kind of an experience I always wanted to have. The closest I ever got was when I was uh, taking care of a couple of infants and, you know, I, I would wear them in a sling across my, across my abdomen. Mm -hmm. That's pretty well, much not the same. No, no. I'm, I'm sure it's not. I just, it's the closest I could ever get to it. Well, we won't we won't discuss how what uh, Shilamith Firestone said was the experience of giving birth. Uh, there, there you go, Wolf. Yeah. Uh, bra brainless Steel is telling you what you can do with the socks <laughs> coming with or inside. Yeah, yeah. yeah but those yeah, are you, only wrap, your, wrap yourself with them when you're masturbating to contain the mess. Yeah, but that's that's really only for athletic sauce or you know, the white ones. Well, I have to say, ew. <laughs> oh, you knew it was going to get there eventually. You know? Okay, come on. It, it's something every teenage boy has done. I haven't. You're not a teenage boy. <laughs> <laughs> Oh goodness me! <clears throat> Deary, but it's still okay me. to do it now as an adult. <laughs> Go ahead, give it a shot. <laughs> See if you like it. No. Yeah, I mean you can sort of like, hey, I never heard of that new experience. <laughs> well, it does change the sensation a bit when you've got you know the, especially if it's a good soft cotton fabric between your hand and your junk there. <laughs> Uh, yes, well, I'm That's sorry. I come cool. in and this conversation goes right down. Anyway, Lagavulin, it's delicious, uh, especially okay, yeah, the Lagavulin. Let's go back to getting drunk. Yeah, the Lagavulin, the Lagavulin Blue, which I think is like 16 year old Scotch, or it might be older. It's it's so it's it's wonderful. I I tend towards scotches, although a good bourbon's pretty good, you know. I've heard. Uh, Hell, I'll bourbon. go for anything. I've heard bullet bourbon's pretty good. I'm, I haven't tried it yet myself, though. Let's see. Good bourbons. Mm. My favorite yeah. I've ever had is um, um, Balvini uh, Double Wood. Balvini Double Wood? Yeah. I've never had that. I found, found it to be incredibly smooth, very little burn. And it actually uh, tasted 
oh, I don't know, kind of maybe kind of fruity, I you could say. Mm. But shit, that's expensive. <laughs> oh man, I had I had a suffered a windfall profit on something and you know, I said I'm going to go buy myself a good bottle of scotch and this shit was 75 bucks a bottle and this was yeah in the 90s mm-hmm. I can't imagine what it is now yeah mm-hmm. probably 100 120 <clears throat> yeah, it's still around the same price oh, wait now there's some it's uh, almost $700 <laughs> Jesus Christ $700 well, I'm seeing a range between about sixty dollars to about seven hundred. Yeah, uh, I saw this little <clears throat> uh, quickie story that showed various wine bottles and told you their value today, and there was some that were up to hundred seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. Let's see, yeah. Bovini Double Wood, seventeen years, the seven hundred dollar one. Holy! <clears throat> shit. Yeah, I, that's not what I bought. <laughs> and then you have the. Balvini twelve year double wood, which is about sixty dollars to about eighty. <coughs> yeah, that's what I got. Yeah, Mark Caesar distills his own whiskey. Well, he's in a country that he's allowed to do that. Yeah, I I wish there was a way I could try that, but I'm sure there's no way you could send that. Now, uh, would a honey whiskey be something distilled from mead? I yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. But I was about to ask what people think of flavored whiskeys. And, you yeah. know, I've, yeah, they, hmm. they've come out with several variants on the Windsor no, Canadian. I, no, I do no. I do want to try the Cider Cast Tullamore Dew. Yeah. That's, that flavored whiskeys lands in the territory for me of um, uh, adulterating coffee with anything. And um, mm. uh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I, I am for pizza, adult uh, coffee with pizza. Anything There's just some awesome. things that are wrong. We just don't do it. Yeah. See, I'm, not, I'm all I'm for not adult grading coffee with anything possible to make it taste less like coffee. But you know, I'm not big on spiced rums either, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I I really haven't found any of the flavored whiskeys that work very well. But there was one. There was one vanilla whiskey I had. I can't remember the uh, what the brand was. That that was the only one that kind of worked. Now, but adding whiskey to something in order to enhance the flavor of that yep. other thing. For say, for instance, I don't know, uh, sweet vermouth. You know that that makes for a, a pleasure pleasant drink or or, or, if you'd uh, like or eggnog. Eggnog, you know, punch. choose whiskey mm-hmm. as your as your favorite um, flavoring for water. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it whiskey does go pretty well with water. I think not bad. Yeah, I I don't believe in just watering it down. You either have to give it something that gives it a little more character, you know, or just leave it alone. Mm. Well, I guess I do. usually do mine with ginger mm. ale just to. Give it some sweet to take off the edge and a bit of bubbly. I, I water mine down with mare sweat. It really changes the taste. I bet, I bet it does. Um, yeah, I imagine it would. Uh, how about or or one ice cube, one ice, one lone ice cube. You pour that, pour that oh. log of woolen into your little snifter there, and you, put one lone ice cube in there. You you Just, you make your horse your your mare sweat into ice cubes, really. No, well, that's a concept. I'm not sure it's a good concept, but it's a concept. Well, I, I, I have found a trick that, uh, you know, instead of ice cubes, I like to make like big blocks of ice in plastic containers, mm-hmm. you know, that just fit into my cup, and. Uh, I was having a problem with some of the plastic containers cracking when they froze. So I did find if I put a shot of whiskey into the water before I freeze it, then it doesn't freeze quite as hard and it doesn't crack the containers. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Other whiskeys. Um, 
What is that? There's an Irish whiskey that is not Jameson. It's not Bushmills either. It's no, you know, there's a red, lot of them. Yeah, it's it's. I think it's, it's mm. Red Breast or something like that's pretty good stuff. Yeah, they're trying to remember that. It's pretty good. Very oh, yeah, peas. Yeah, yeah. I had I had one of those. It was from one of the artisan brewers that are popping up in Ireland nowadays. Um, um, Red Monkey Balls was it? Red Monkey Balls. Hmm. And now, is, is it from any old monkey or just red monkeys? I think just red ones. Maybe orangutans are included. Well, orangutans aren't monkeys, and orangutans are. Well, I know, but the public generalizes. They won't know. Yeah, I guess. Point taken. Yeah, but I'm the private, so I will. Yeah, well. Are you the private primate? <laughs> primate private? Uh, Gen Zoo says Alaska, Arizona, Maine, Massachusetts, Michigan, Go Missouri, Maine. Ohio, and Rhode Island allow distillation of alcohol at home. See, these are Maine, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island are states that I've lived in, and so therefore I've always felt quite at home with. But I don't have a still. Well, I, I thought that it was pretty much legal. You know, um, in in any state to brew her, you know, to distill a certain amount for personal use, you just weren't allowed to sell it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have a lovely thing going on in our town right now. Whose Do name you? I'm not going to mention in case of whoever's listening has never heard and doesn't know what it is and. And I'm not going to get myself or anybody else in trouble. You know, mm -hmm. here in um, the state I'm living in, it just recently became legal to, you know, consume that fibrous matter. And um, there's, we, you know, the, the closest head shop is, God, 50, 60 miles away, something like that. Um, so we won't be, you know, driving to go get any anytime soon. But anyways... Mm -hmm. um, Somebody in town here has decided that they want to be a grower and sell because you're allowed to do that. And so they registered as an actual grower um, for mass quantities and they're testing product right now. So they're giving it away. <laughs> that <laughs> is a that that's that's good. Yes, it is. And they just, oh, that is wonderful. Feed, just give us oh, feedback. Yeah. OK. I'd consider that if, I, if I could. Porch, if you wake me up in your porch, you know how good it is. <laughs> is, is the yeah. feedback better when you're stoned? Uh, yeah, yeah. It, it's like what? Oh. I I would I would be uh, a product tester for that because I'm a hard case. So, well, it's pretty neat. It, I understand it's only just a small group of us who have gotten it. Um, um, who kind of like know each other and stuff, but yeah. Mm. Holy cow! What a wonderful thing! Oh, I got guess. a half. An, I got a half an ounce mm. last time. Half an ounce for free? Are you kidding? Me? Oh yeah, hell. Yeah, you know, I I got the soft girl's cat stoned on the the catnip and silver vine, and you know when I went to pet her, she had exactly that reaction of just kind of pulling back wide eyed like. Dude, your hand is huge. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Japanese whiskeys. Anybody ever done any? any I've, I've had some pretty good Japanese whiskeys. <laughs> no. Had, no. Had sake one, so I didn't really much care for it. It's it's sort of they're they're done in the style of Scotch. It seems to me it has they have the same sort of uh, the same sort of mouthfeel and uh, a little bit a little bit smoky. But anyway, good good stuff. I'm trying to remember a name. Yeah, well, I was going to bring up, you know, this, the stereotype about the Irish. Something that really reinforced it was the uh, Dublin Whiskey Flood in 1875. 
that mm -hmm. uh, one of the distilleries had a fire, and you know all of the all of the aging vats collapsed and flooded the streets, and no one was killed in the fire, but uh, eighteen people died that night from trying to suck up the whiskey in the streets and dying of you know overconsumption. Really. Let's see here. We got. Uh, I don't believe you. Got Yamazaki single malt. Check it whiskey. out. It's a historical event. If you that's Google the stuff. It, sure you that's that's it. what I was thinking of, Major. Okay. I was also also see a, a Hibiki Japanese Harmony whiskey here. The, well, the, Yam it, the Yamazaki is like one hundred seventy five dollars. Shit. Yeah, it's it's fucking stupidly expensive i had i was visiting i was in toronto while staying at somebody's well actually on the outskirts of toronto when the worlds were in toronto and this guy had a really nice house and he was staying there and sure enough he had some of that stuff and it's like yeah this is good stuff i don't know i, I don't usually spend more than 30 bucks on, on, a, on a bottle of, of alcohol <laughs> Yeah, I wouldn't be doing that myself, but, you know, if it happens to be there, oh, would you care for some whiskey? <laughs> Absolutely. Give me a little, you know, some taste. Jeez, we've swapped, sp we've swapped spots there, Jenny. Okay, well... Apparently in Minnesota, it says uh, wine and beer can be manufactured in home for family use without a license. However, it is still a felony offense to manufacture distilled spirits. Uh -huh. Well, that's bullshit. Yeah. Wait. So. Okay, well, but what? me again. That seems contradictory. Wine and beer can be manufactured in the home for family use. Okay. But it is a felony to manufacture distilled spirits. Mm. So that's no the state of Minnesota. It's not that's not a federal thing. Unless your neighbors are teetotalers, who the, who the hell's gonna turn you in for it? How would they know? Yeah, well that's generally I think that, you know, nobody's gonna pay attention to it as long as you're not selling it. And the main thing is, if you're selling it without a license, the IRS will come down on you for tax evasion. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, of course. That's how they get the big criminals. Mm. So they're, that's how they're getting uh, Trump. Well, oh, maybe. Kind of sort of, well, this, that, <laughs> Show me. That's, uh, that's, how they're, that's how they're letting go Trump. <laughs> well, since we're talking about banning stuff, uh, how about uh, the, the Florida bill... Uh, it was signed Monday that will ban kids under fourteen in, from being able to have social media. Yeah, yeah let's 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 have them. I want to see how they enforce that. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of, I was kind of wondering that myself. Yeah, I I don't see how they can enforce it. You know, except maybe if there's a social media company that has their servers in the state. No. Well. Isn't that going to somehow impact on, on uh, who's that guy, that representative? Oh, yeah, Gates guy, that Gates. Won't that impact his social life a little bit? How's he going to How's he gonna arrange his hookups? Hey, that's not funny to joke about. No, I know it's not funny to joke about. It's not funny that the guy's a congressman either, still. Uh, yeah, oh, was... oh, 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 I thought you were talking about uh, Bill Gates. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm talking about uh, Matt oh, Gates. Oh yeah, the Nazi yeah, one. Yeah, that's that guy. Yeah, 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 the guy from Florida, sure. who's <laughs> where this law just went into effect. That's going to impact his social life. Well, badly. it hasn't got it hasn't gotten to effect yet. Yeah. For as far as I'm aware. Yeah. Um. There, there was a, a something I heard about a couple of days ago that one of the owners of Chick Fil A was arrested oh for. God. Driving 500 miles to meet a 15 year old girl in Ohio. Oh no. Um, let's make a correction on that. It was a franchise owner. Okay. 
Sorry. But yeah, uh, he drove into another state <clears throat> to have sex with the 15-year-old girl. And it, it happened that the father came home while he was taking advantage of his daughter. And uh, credit to the That's... father for calling the police instead of just yes. beating him senseless. Which, well, if he had done, would have been totally justified in any court that he found this man abusing his underage daughter in his house. So I'm sure that he would not have had much problem in court, you know, all things falling under protecting your family. Gee, it makes you wonder what the county that um, let um, um, that rotten little kid who killed two people. Yeah. Let him know what, what they would do with that kind of case. Yeah, well, that, that whole episode is very troubling to me because that's a. Uh... That was actually uh, Sloth Girl, the town she grew up in and still has a lot of relatives in. Oh, that's harsh. Yeah. Well, pretty much all of her surviving family lives there. It's 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 kind of weird that it would happen in Kenosha. Kenosha used to be a a, a blue city, a blue county, and. Yeah. All that kind of stuff. And then around the time of um, Reagan blaming everything on the government, mm, they kind of bought that bought that Kool-Aid and drank, drank it down. Yeah, well, and, and that was... Right, right, right wing ever since. Yeah, well, when, when AMC went out of business, what, what kept it blue was the auto workers union. Yeah, probably so. Probably so. Yeah, now... Um, Kenosha's getting heavily um, bought up by uh, Chicago people, realizing that they can take a commuter train to, into Chicago for for less than an hour as they move to Kenosha. Yeah, so it's becoming a bedroom community for Chicago. I'm actually gotcha. kind of surprised that didn't happen a few decades back. Oh, it's been, it's been going like on for 50 years. Yeah. Sounds like the relationship between massachusetts and new hampshire because there are no you know the there's no income tax no state income tax in new hampshire so a lot of it's it's not too much of a commute from southern new hampshire to the greater boston area so a lot of people who want to escape massachusetts of course your property taxes are through the fucking roof in new hampshire but aside from that you know So would it be cheaper to live in Old Hampshire? Not really. It's a long commute from Old Hampshire. Yeah. You got to fly across the Atlantic. <laughs> well, you know, rather, Old Hampshire is rather nice, though. It's 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 you know that's there's there's Southampton and and Hamble and yeah. you know it's and they're better bars really. Well, that's why or we pubs. Need they the call them pubs there. That's why we needed the Concord so that you know people could commute across the Atlantic. Well, Concord is the capital of New New Hampshire. There's that. Well, see, see, um, this is linking up. There's a conspiracy here. Uh -huh. Yeah, but the, you know, they dropped the E in Concord, New Hampshire. If you can link three words together, it's a conspiracy. See. Well, they, you know, in in New England D's, it's actually New Hampshire. That's how it's pronounced. So that's kind of dropping the E a little. Yeah. Uh, uh, Lavender Lady used to talk about how it how it annoyed her that people called the city uh, North Versailles. 
nobody would go with the French pronunciation of her size. Yeah, 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 yeah. I can, I can see that. Like, there's a, a, a the street that runs along the waterfront in Newport, Rhode Island, is uh, called Thames Street, not Thames, Thames. It's like, wait a minute. When did that change? I wonder, you know, I'm, I'm sort of wondering if in oldie England that they used to call the, the Thames River, the Thames River. <laughs> well, I, I did that for several years because I'd only seen it in print and I hadn't heard anybody actually pronounce it. Oh. Stretches. Yes, so we have an HP Lovecraft reference from Jinzu in the in the uh, okay. chat, and I just wonder. Um, now that that leads me to wonder which whiskey would Sulu uh, prefer. Yeah, I've I've never actually read Lovecraft, but of course, you know, you can't escape the mythology. <laughs> it's just so permeated our culture. Which whiskey is the preferred whiskey of the ancient gods, the ancient ones? And Ethan is looking up at me very annoyed because I dared to move my leg. I disturbed his nap. No. So what? It's just a fucking cat. Mm -hmm. hey, I have two incredibly polite kitties that don't wake me up when I'm sleeping. And Molly is out again. I got. She had some her vaccines updated yesterday, so she's kind of worn out today. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, small burst of energy after her nap, and then she's back down to being crashed. <laughs> uh, yes, Ember, we did want to summon an ancient old one. Uh, yeah, Ember, are you working? or If you can, I, I sent you a link to join in. I'm not sure that Ember really qualifies as an ancient old one. No, she's, em she's Ember sort doesn't. of, she's sort of, you know, young. She's not old because she's she's younger than me, and old is always <laughs> defined as five years more than my current age. I see. Yeah, you know, it, it's one of those things that's a moving target. I'll never catch up to it. I don't still don't trust anyone over thirty. I don't think I've trusted myself since I was about thirty three and my puberty finally finished. Uh, how did you know? Well, I had a weird puberty that it started normally when I was about sixteen and it like got stuck halfway through. Mm -hmm. And I didn't develop any facial hair or chest hair until my early 30s. Oh. So that's why I figured about 33 is really when it finished. Because that was when I finally grew a beard. Mm -hmm. See, I, I never had that. I never had that uh, honor. <laughs> never worked. Yeah, well, that, it's my biggest issue right now is just. You know, it, seeing myself in the morning with the facial hair back, mm. that's the thing that triggers me. You know, and, and I just hate, like, like if Sloth Girl has an emergency and I have to run upstairs, just the idea of anybody seeing me with facial hair, really, that stresses me. You can understand that. Unfortunately, it's all turned white, so the laser stuff won't work, and the yeah. electrolysis is horribly expensive. Yes, it is. It's very expensive. 
I, I got an estimate that it would take about a hundred hours over the course of two years at seventy dollars an hour. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, seven thousand dollars I don't have. Well, mm -hmm. if it helps any, you're probably the only one really focusing on it. If they do I know it. I'm not the only one. I know there's at least one guy in my building who really notices. But... Okay, so you and some asshole. <laughs> Yeah, well, no, he's Mage, like the only Mage, guy in the building who hasn't really accepted me transitioning. Mage, you don't, you don't understand the depth of um, no, I, the I, feelings. I, uh, I, I know. No, I, no, I you, know. You don't. You're not trans. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's I, it, it's it's damn near unaliving territory. Yeah. Okay? I know yeah. that Mage was making a joke, and you know he realizes it's a serious issue. Yes, I do realize it's a serious issue. Oh, I don't doubt that. It is highly annoying, highly annoying. In fact, deeply, and both highly and deeply, all throughout the range, it's pretty ridiculous. Yeah, Mark is asking when I realized it. And uh, again, when I was growing up, sexual dysmorphia was a term no one had ever heard of. But uh, I can point to things going back to when I was like six years old. So, hey, hey, save it. We have a show on Sunday that we, you and I have to do. Don't, yep. give, don't give up. Okay, the yeah. <clears throat> That's right. Yeah, everybody check out uh, Asshole on the Kentucky Atheist channel. We will be discussing trans issues. Like whether or not have you pink, pink have is you appropriate all... at a, at a, at a, in a sh to wear in a shop class, things like that, you know. <laughs> I hope you you've all managed to just speaking as long as we're yeah. talking about stuff. Is it? Uh, I hope you've all checked out the the Breeze new channel, the Transpositions. Yep. Yeah, cool. Brian Number. And um, me? Yep. I and, cannot, and I cannot find that channel to save my soul. Okay. It, um, Jenny, well, remind me on Twitter. I'll send you a link. Please do. I'll, I'll just I've been asking drop people, it. and they say, oh, well, it's that name. And then that's all they say. And it's like, no, that's not enough of a description. Give me more so I can actually find it. Yeah, Amber it's is saying, the oh, it's all transpositions. Excuse me. Ember is saying old is all adult offspring. Unfortunately, under that definition, I qualify because my youngest two are in college now. So, Ember, you just made me old. I wasn't old before you said that. It's all your fault now. I am. I think I'm a mod on here. I'm not sure. Yeah, I, I was just going to put the link in the side chat. I yeah, I'm about to, to do that. I'm, 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 yeah, I'm about to, about to okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I apologize. I haven't been paying attention to the chat. Oh. Hello, everyone that I didn't notice was here. Sorry. There's a there's a good show on public television right now that I'm reading the captions, so that's why I missed it. I'll pay attention now. Kind of. <laughs> I'm I'm too broke to pay attention. <laughs> we're all broke. God damn it! How come we're all broke? It sucks. Can't buy that log of Vulan, among other things. Damn it! This sucks. Uh, yeah, I I fell behind on the side show, but there too. Uh, the skits just showed up. Hey. Hey, skits. Awesome. Okay, I missed what this is about. What? What's this about? An acid? Is that an acid that keeps you from getting old? Mm-hmm. An acid that shows promise. Hmm. Uh, 
Okay, yep. Okay, so there's uh, Stephanie that got the link for their new channel. Yeah. Got some good stuff coming up tomorrow, I think. Good uh, news stories. Play some good stories. I'm going to do, uh, uh, hopefully, trying to arrange and uh, uh, talk with... Uh, a gal who is uh, quite a remarkably good pickleball player. She's really, she's really quite something. So, looking forward to that. I don't know much about pickleball, except that it got strangely popular. It has. Ah, there's Jenny again. Pickleball? What about pickleball? Ain't nerdy. Yeah, Stephanie was just saying that the person she's interviewing is a surprisingly good pickleball player. No, not surprisingly good. She, she well, works at it. She's well, yeah. a, a semi-pro. Sorry. Wrong, wrong phrasing. She's awesome. So we're trying, trying to pull that <coughs> together for some time. Over the weekend, maybe next week. Uh, uh, Jenny, Commander says he sent you a link on Discord for the new channel. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, I, I found it off Stephanie's and, and subscribed. I'm the 100th subscriber. Nice. I, I, I am sorry, Commander. I, I'm not good at gendering penguins, and I keep doing that to you. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Although um the 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 thrift store here, you know, when when you donate something they, they give you a coupon, but to activate the coupon you have to go online and answer a little survey. I hate that. Yeah, well, most of the time it's not worth it, but I I decided it would be fun to go and answer the survey while I was drunk. Hmm. And I had been mm -hmm. listening to R.J. Downer. So one of the questions, of course, is, you know, why do you shop at our store? And I answered, because a thrift store is the most likely place to find a wooden penguin. Because your security system sucks and it's easy to rip you off. No. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, a thrift store, I don't think they even care, considering they get their merchandise for free. Uh, no, they, they do care. I've, I've heard of Goodwill busting people for shoplifting. Really? I never yeah. heard of anybody getting busted at a thrift store. Maybe they care if you're, uh, you know, stealing stuff that has the, the newest color tags. Yeah, some of the thrift stores around here are actually rip-offs. One to one, they were selling a, a used you know, you know, a mm -hmm. towel, and it was basically the same price as I would buy in, in, just a, in a store, a regular store. Yeah, the, the pricing is erratic. There is some things that, you know, I could buy at Walmart or Target for about the same price the thrift stores got it for. <coughs> but, you know, I, on my budget, it has been a good place to assemble a new wardrobe. I like Goodwill for costume jewelry. Well, I, I won't shop at Goodwill just because of their their practices, mostly how they treat their employees. So what we have here is savers, which basically they uh, they take donations from the DAV. So they're basically buying the stuff that the DAV collects and reselling it. So the, the other thing is, you know, just... Uh, it's kind of nice not to have to go with the newest fashion trends, you know, so getting some, some stuff that's older or suits my taste much better.
Did everybody agree Spy Side whiskey is the best? Uh, Nerdy, I'm, I'm not familiar with Spy Side. Spy Side? Yep. I, I'm not familiar I've with never that. Never heard brand. of it. I, I don't know how it's pronounced. I'm just guessing. Yeah, maybe it's a UK brand that we don't see in the US. Yeah, you know, I, I don't think the thrift store would be allowed to since they don't have a liquor license, so. Space side? Uh... Yeah, actually, oh. Nerdy, I, I had this happen. That uh, one of the girls at the thrift store complimented my outfit. And when I was thinking about it, I was thinking that, was she complimenting me because she thinks I you know, nailed the vintage look and didn't realize I'd been wearing the same jacket for 25 years. <laughs> so space guide, scotch whiskey, single malt, uh, 70, 750 oh. milliliter bottle, $26.99 total wines. Uh, that's a reasonable price. Yeah. Then they have the 12 year for about $50. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do have a bottle of some 12 year old stuff, you know, for sipping for special occasions. And uh, every year on his birthday, we have to uh, toast Sloth Girl's departed father with uh, the. Damn it. I had, had the name a second ago Jack Daniels. Yeah. Because that was his brand, so we keep a bottle of that on hand that basically we only open each year on his birthday. Hmm. I've tried Jack Daniels before. It's okay, I guess. It's a decent sipping whiskey. A little harsh for my taste. It's the yeah. lesson whiskey. It's the, it's the one that, that all the, the boys in high school and, and early college think is so cool, so they all own Jack Daniels t-shirts and, and think that it's, that it's just the rite of passage to be Jack Daniels fan. Oh, geez. Yeah. So annoying. <laughs> but you know, oh, with teenagers. Boys and their idols. Oh. Uh, Can't say I've ever idolized Jack Daniels. Nope, me neither. I thought it was harsh as shit the first time I drank one. Mm. I was never good with idols in general. Sorry, Jenny, I talked over you. What'd you say? I found lighting it made no difference at all. Ah. Yeah, well, like I say, we only use it for the tradition. It's not something I drink on a regular basis. But, you know, it, it's nice to have that little tradition and help her do a little memorial for her father each year. You know, it, it's good to have things like that to, you know, remember the people we've lost. It, it can be hard, but, you know, you don't want the memories to completely fade out either. So it's good to do something to keep them alive. I'm, I've actually been distressing a bit over the last year that I think some of my memories of my late fiance are. I think I'm losing some of it. Try and write down as much as you can. Well, fortunately, she was uh, rather prolific at journaling, so uh, I keep coming across her old journals. Fi- from time to time, and of course, I've I've got quite a bit of her old artwork. Well, even um, even even with that, just write, write down what you you remember. Yeah, it's a good idea to, to do that. It'll help you with your memory retention of it, and, and if you don't retain 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 it, you can look at what you wrote. <laughs> yeah, actually, the what started all that was I was a. Uh, was reviewing a, a hard drive from my old computer to see if there was anything I need to keep on it. And I had a folder there of, you know, things I had written while I was living with her. Hmm. 
so, you know, just that really did help bring back a lot of things about just the the way our relationship had developed over a couple of years there. What? Hmm? Uh, Mark Caesar saying, Mage, pretend, are you doing a Trump? I'm not, not sure what that exactly that was in reference to. Neither do I. Did I maybe I stuttered? I don't know. Yep. I, nerdy saying it was for him, it was trendy to drink Newcastle Brown Ale. Yeah, a ales aren't really popular in the U.S. The, you don't really see a lot of them. Yeah, the, the memory links get me. I've, I have several times had, you know, just emotional breakdown sometimes to the point of just just leaving me to where I just wanted to cocoon myself because I found a box of old stuff and, you know, found one of her journals when I wasn't expecting it. When I wasn't really prepared to look at that stuff. And, yeah, sometimes it's left me a crying mess. Okay, yeah, Mark was saying that's, you know, for making up new words, so. I like that he got a gag order before he even starts the tri next trial. <laughs> I, I hadn't heard about that, but, you know, I, I completely understand the judge's position considering what happened to him in all the other cases that he gets yeah. on his social media and just blasts out all sorts of shit. Maybe, maybe this time we'll get a judge with balls. Oh, Judge Cannon has to be removed from that case. I don't know why there hasn't been a motion to remove her. The, the only theory I can find between her not being removed already is that the prosecution has just been, you know, trying to build up until they had what they felt was enough concrete evidence so it couldn't be appealed. It'll be appealed no matter what the prosecutor does. Yeah. That's that's Trump's strategy all his life. Appeal he'll appeal <laughs> delay, delay, delay. Yeah. So there have there have been motions to, to dismiss her. Are we talking about the same judge, Eileen Cannon? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I was I was referring to the uh, judge in the upcoming Stormy Daniels on the fifteenth. Yeah, yeah. I I don't know much about that case yet, but yeah. You know. Well, it's, you it's know, a fairly simple case. He paid her. He paid her kickback money to uh, keep her mouth shut, and he paid it out of the wrong account. Yep. You know, out of his out of his actual pocket. Who freaking cares? Out of campaign funds, you're fucked. Yeah, well, did you hear that the the Republican Party came up with a loophole for paying Trump's legal fees that the, the party said they weren't going to pay it, but the party has now teamed up with one of Trump's super PACs, you know, with the agreement that half of all the money collected would go directly to Trump. So, yeah, it's like they, they can't fundraise to pay his legal bills, but they can join together in a fundraiser with his super PAC and use that to pay his legal bills. Stop bailing the asshole out. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I was pretty, pretty pissed off when they dropped that um, bond bond amount. Well, that wasn't too unexpected, but 
it's it is a common thing, but in his case, well, they shouldn't have done it because at the same time, you know, he was bragging that he had the money in the bank. So there was no reason for them to do it because he was claiming he had plenty of money to cover it. You know, and I think that's all these judges need to do, you know, is hold Trump to what he says on his social media. You know, he gives them all the evidence they need. Yeah, and, and the social media scam that just started, you got you got you got that in your I reviews the viewfinder. Yeah, that uh he that his uh truth social went public and that he got, you know, suddenly got like five hundred million from that or something. Five, five billion. Five billion was it? I mean, yeah. <laughs> You know, and yeah, they, there's no way but, that, but that it's, was worth but it's anywhere not real near money. that. It's, it, it's not cash. Yeah. Yeah, you won't be able to touch that. So yeah. just, at least not yet. He's hoping he can use it for collateral to get the actual greenbacks. So the bigger problem that we should be considering is whoever who actually does bail him out, that means, means they'll have somebody who's potentially either the next president in, in their back pocket. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and... uh Mark Caesar brought up this thing. Trump is now selling Bibles. Yeah. That he, 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 he started that he, he started that over a year ago. He was selling them. This is just a new version of it. Okay, I, I hand hand heard about him selling the Bibles before, but yeah, so so now you can get the Trump Bible that includes a copy of the Constitution and you know some other of the documents from the founding fathers in it. The Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence. Yeah, like, but you know, Trump couldn't even hold the Bible right to take a photograph. Why? Why do people still believe that he is a righteous man? I just, I don't. Well, because get it. the Bible is his favorite book. Yeah, yeah, but the, the well, magazine said so. Bleach, it the Magus believe he's a messiah, and I know that there was, for a while, there were a couple of preachers saying that they needed to add a book about Trump to the Bible. Hi, Kyle. Hey, Kyle. Yeah, Trump approved God. I mean... They fucking literally wheeled out a golden idol of Trump. You know, how how can you not see that violating the first commandment? You know, how, how can anyone who even knows the first of the Ten Commandments not see Trump as being a blasphemer? Maybe we could start calling him the Antichrist. Uh, we've tried that. It's usually more the second commandment, but okay. Sorry, okay. So I I thought the first... Yeah, well, the second one's no, no, about no, making Melania, items the first one. Melania ones. would be the Antichrist. He'd, he'd be the Uncle Christ. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I suppose, I suppose that's true. So I, suppose sorry, the... I, I know that was low-hanging fruit, but I just kind of had to do it. Well, least suppose this Trump worship could violate the first one. Yeah. Oh, really? Is that true, Ember? Yeah. Yeah. I, that's what I had heard, too, that basically it all completely whitewashes American history and, you know, probably saying that we, you know, did a favor to the natives and the blacks that we brought over here. But... I, I must my 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 I must have a terrible translation because I never read any American history in the translation of the Bible that I have. Well, that's also because you don't think that Jesus was was a white guy. I don't know. I've never met him. And does uh? In but if I were him, I'd be pissed. In this new MAGA uh, Bible, uh, does it have uh, Jesus using in the AR fifteen? 
<laughs> yeah. You know, I... Are you... Honest to God? Yeah, I think Rage was making a joke on that one, but... I wouldn't put it past them. I mean, have you seen the cover of it? It's leather. And they're getting 60 bucks, bucks a pop or something like that. Yeah, fifty nine um, ninety five or something. With, with, with the cover is embossed with the American flag. No, I haven't seen yeah. it. I, this is actually the first time I've even heard of it. So, <laughs> apparently, between this, yeah. between this happening and what happened uh, very recently with the Trump Corporation taking over the part, uh, Republican Party, and now the uh, nationalist Christians, you know, through this Bible thing, uh, have merged government and. Um, and religion, they have created their fascist state. Okay, if they win, the, their mechanism is all set to go now. They got the judges, they got the corporations, they got the religions. The rest of us are fucked. Yeah, that's um, why you can't win. Mark Caesar, it's the the Mormons claim that the uh, the eighteen years that Jesus is missing from the Bible that he uh, spent in the Americas, you know, teaching the natives. Yeah, in New York. <laughs> well, you know, maybe, yeah, we should check just, out maybe, maybe we should just vote for literally anybody else. Except maybe Robert Kennedy. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Texas is teacher un unhappy with Biden and Trump changes his name to literally anybody else run for president. I I think it's a winning strategy. It, it might be a winning strategy, but it's a losing strategy mm. for anybody who really cares about anything substantial like human yeah. rights. And un <laughs> because literally anybody else isn't on is he may be on the ballot, but he's not going to win. And so it's either going to be the orange guy or, or Grandpa Joe. And I'm, pre I'm, pretty sure this, I'm pretty sure at this point he'd just be a write in. Don't you dare say Grandpa Joe anymore unless you're going to say Grandpa Trump. Well, okay, they're the indeed. same fucking age at this point. When, 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 we're, yeah, this, when we're all this old, th those few years don't mean shit. That's true. <laughs> Yeah, once you're I mean, past 30, yeah, a couple of years doesn't make any difference. No, I, 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 I'm i sure Stephanie's noticed it too. That Have you noticed how many uh, musicians who are like within a couple of years of your own birth, age have been dying and dropping? And, and you know, that's... Oh, people have been we, dropping dead around me for ages now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's like, holy fuck, my generation's starting to die off. Yeah, well, I, I have happens. noticed that. <laughs> I have That's the way it goes. That That's the way it goes. Believe it or not, folks, we're not eternal. <laughs> hope may spring eternal, but I'm my name ain't hope. If you read the gospel according to Biff, Jesus's childhood friend, those were the years they were traveling to the east, learning wow. other religions and the duplication trick. Okay. Um, it, it's probably not well known to Americans, but there is a site in Japan that they claim to be Jesus's grave. Mm -hmm. Do they have whiskey? I don't think the Japanese drink a lot of whiskey, and you know, I, I swear I'm not making this up. That, no, that there, is a, there is actually a grave with a little fence around it that you can go and see that they claim is Jesus' grave. Yeah, but isn't he supposed to be not in there? Isn't that the whole idea? I don't know. I surrendered Schrodinger. I, I think it's like that this is when he died the second time. That's where his body was left. But yeah, uh, it depends on if you think that he rose bodily to the heavens yeah. yeah. <clears throat> okay, so it's your know. beer is the most common alcohol drink in Japan. Yeah, I, I, I do find that 
You know, the Japanese interpretation of Jesus is really funny. Mm. Especially, you know, they don't get Christmas. They definitely do not get the American Christmas. They love it, but they don't understand it at all. I got to ask Ember a question out there. Um, Ember, is when you say rice whiskey, is that is that sake or what? And if no, what is sake? Well, sake is rice wine. I asked Ember. Mm. Sorry. Jeez. I was going to answer, but you asked Ember. Well, I, you know, was, she's trying to type it now. And, you know, everybody knows the answer is like, oh, well, why should I hit enter? <laughs> Bigfoot saw that all he had made, and it was very good. And there was evening and there was morning the sixth day. Yeah, um, they... The Mormons also have a passage that uh, that Joseph Smith traveled with Bigfoot, and that Bigfoot was actually still Cain, who was you know cursed to walk the earth among his enemies. Oh my God, oh, man! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> then uh, this all happened before or after they got to the they got here from their planets. Well, yeah, it, it, it was... happened. It happened after they came over in the wooden submarines, I think. But yeah, this, this was actually part of Joseph. Uh, was it Joseph or Joseph Smith's Smith. writings? Yeah, Joseph Smith's writings. Yeah, mm -hmm. that he traveled for a couple of days. That he was riding a donkey and having a conversation with Bigfoot. Nice, nice. Was that on their cross country tri trip? They, they were doing that. I, I think it was on the truck out to Utah. Yeah. Okay. So it's like a it's it's like a Jack Kerouac thing, only only earlier. What has happened? To I'm this sorry. Place? I'm showing my age. Damn it. Doing La Mar Zulu. I don't know who La Mar Zulu is, but it says Bigfoot are Nephilim. I, I know I had heard that, but uh, that well, Bigfoot maybe and Bigfoot and all the related ones were the scattered Nephilim. Maybe Bigfoots are the tribe of Esau, you know, the guy with the hairy hand. Well, what? you know, he he should have listened and not masturbated so much as a teenager. Yeah, but here we are again, back in the sock drawer. Holy smokes. Well, you brought it up. I'm Jesus Christ! I just brought up the hairy hand. I was I was being biblical for crying yeah, out but loud. I, I, again, that's something you know. Any teenage I mean, boy that was brought up in a Christian oh, family was told that. Yeah. Well. Okay. Okay. But th that's true. But one of the stories I heard about the new Bible, the the new Trump branded Bible, was that it's that the leaves of the of the book. Uh, since the, it's gilt with gold on the edges, of course, naturally, you wouldn't have anything Trump that didn't have gold yeah, gilding on the edges. Have gold. But the but the lead that the pages stick together, and which makes me wonder if people are reading it for the articles or are reading it for the pictures. That makes <laughs> me wonder. I'm, I'm, I'm I, really I, you know, I think if there was a manufacturing defect that all the pages stuck together. It wouldn't matter because I can't imagine any of the people who would buy that would ever read a Bible. Mm. Or could. <laughs> now, uh, answering the question, uh, the, uh, Joseph Smith was killed in Illinois. He was uh, locked up in jail and a bunch of the good citizens of, I forget the town, they, they broke in and grabbed a hold of Joseph and his brother Hiram and bye-bye uh, oh, yeah. Smith boys. Yeah, I didn't remember what state it was in, but now that you mention it, I remember that about the, uh, the citizens. Um, they were pissed, the you know, <laughs> it's like they were, they were pissed. Well, they were, yeah, I mean... How many thousand people did he scam by that time? Well, yeah, and then there's a thing about how he was going after everybody's wife. That was not all that cool. 
Yeah. Okay, I got to step away for a moment. Be right back. All right. You shall attempt to carry on. Must be those loose bowels again. I, I, mm. I know Mage oh. can keep you two reined in for a few minutes. <laughs> Jesus. I'll go get the ball gags. <laughs> oh, the old and filthy. It's great. <laughs> oh, yes. This is highly questionable content for all you people in YouTube land. This is extremely questionable content. We haven't said but, one single dirty word. Come on. <laughs> no, not yet. Just lots of innuendo. <laughs> Clever gay repartee going on here. That's all it is. Ah, oh, damn! I wish I had some whiskey. I got some whiskey. Shit. Fork so, it over. Um, um, Stephanie, nautical yes. Stephanie. Um, I'd like to hear your comments on the bridge disaster. <sighs> It seems to me an awful lot of people don't understand the concept of inertia. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's a big one, yes. You know, it, it. I think it was Isaac Newton that said an object in motion will remain in motion, an object at rest will remain at rest. Well, they put this, this, this thing that displaces like 85,000 metric tons, that's T-O-N-N-E-S, in case you're ever wondering, uh, in motion at, at eight knots, right? So in basically nine miles an hour-ish. And then the power went out. And I don't know if you've ever seen the rudders on these things, but they're not that big, really. You can't turn those things. If, you, if you're ever in the way of a freighter coming along, you alter course, not him, because <laughs> he can't. <laughs> so it, it, when, you, when there's no power, the power goes out. If you watch this, like a seven-minute film of the incident, right? And you can see when the power went out. And it's like at that moment, I guarantee you, that the person on the helm and the and the harbor pilot, I'm sure they had a harbor pilot aboard, because they always do for ships that are coming in and going out. There's always a pilot. Both of them turned to each other and went and said, we're fucked. <laughs> hmm. Put out the mayday call. But what are you going to do? This thing is going on a course. And I'm sure there was a course correction involved. But it went. They were out of out of maneuverability uh, it's almost instantly they couldn't do anything they were fucked now so you see all these conspiracy theories going on it's like no that there was a failure and people are saying well you know there need to be more tugs and this and that and this, this this happens like once in a blue moon of course when it happens it causes no end of mayhem and hell but it happens rather infrequently. You'd, you'd, you'd be thinking that there'd be bridge, bridges falling down all the time if if that were the yeah that were the thing. No, oh, they couldn't even drop the bloody hmm. anchor. The anchor wouldn't hold. <laughs> the ship needs to be actually going in reverse in order to get an anchor to hold. Yeah, they sent a made a made a call before the collision, so. Yeah, I mean, but it was, a, like I said, a seven-minute, this seven-minute film, you're watching it, and it's like, holy shit, that thing's, you know, I'm sure they were just basically going, we're fucked, unless something, unless something amazing happens. Well, unless the tugs could catch up in time, which they were too far back to do. Yeah, but, well, tugs yeah, can... That... Apparently tugs the power can... went out just as there was the current coming in from another another river joining it oh and oh. if you've ever sailed in charleston harbor uh there's an awful lot of current yeah <laughs> like so tons like of the current. currents made uh, oh no in, in baltimore harbor, go to stern so it wasn't you know going straight centered anymore it was running at an angle at that point and they didn't have any way to correct it yeah i mean <clears throat> You, you know, boats don't have brakes. You, you, you 
you you got to if, if you've ever tried to dock a boat or a sailboat or something, especially a sailboat which has you know unless you're under auxiliary power or some nature mm. you're sailing along you got to slow down somehow how do you slow down well you head into the wind and luff the sails and the boat comes slows down and then you ease on and then you dock the boat you know it's, well it's, even it's if not, you got a motorboat you know it's hard to break when you're not touching any solid surfaces you know that's the problem with cars in the rain that you know they hydroplane they start riding on top of the water and then they can't break either Right. I mean, you, what you do, what you do on a motorboat is is to throw the thing into reverse, right? But you know, but again, it, it's it's uh, inertia. Yep. The heavier the boat, the longer it's going to take for it to make re any regardless difference. Regardless of that, they would have tried to put it in reverse, but gee, you kind of can't do that without power. <coughs> yeah. When, yeah. You know, when, <laughs> when, when you ain't got no go, and when you ain't got no go, go momentum, as it were. Yeah, you Stephanie, through. you're aware that um, there's right wingers dropping their potty mouths about uh, the conspiracy. That the the one the most developed one I heard is that it was a um, um, a planned accident by the Biden administration to highlight their infrastructure bill. Oh yeah. Oh sure. Let's Ooh. shut down a major East Coast seaport and for months just to make a political point. That makes an awful lot of sense. Well, see, I think I think it does to them because that's something they would be happy. Yeah, to something use. that they would have tried. They don't fucking care. Okay. Uh, ha has anybody gotten to that it was somehow caused by Hunter Biden's laptop? <laughs> No, no but Jay Bundy had a hand it, in it. I found it. I heard that they found it under the ship. <laughs> yeah, you know it. It's just it's, people, are people are idiots. Yeah, that, but that, I, mean, that, I am absolutely certain. No, it's guy. I, I would not have wanted to be on the crew of that vessel. Yeah, because you just you know it's it's got to, that had to have been the longest five six minutes of their lives. Like we are. So well, they, there's a, a point a few minutes before it hit the bridge when there was like, you know, a big puff of black smoke, and then there was nothing coming from oh, the that stacks. Was, that was. So about I'm, 30 I'm wondering if that big happened. puff of smoke is like when they threw it into reverse, they blew the engine. They finally got the motor going. I, well, the, 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 those vessels run on the cheapest diesel imaginable. Their, it's really their lights dirty fuel. were off when the smoke started to come out. Yeah. It was something catastrophic in the engine oh. system. Okay, yeah, so they'd already lost power before that. Yeah, I can definitely see the guys just kind of looking at each other and shrugging. Yeah, well, yeah, they, you know, they sent out the radio call, and it's like, eh, that that's all we can do. Now we just wait for something to stop us. It's a matter of what we're going to hit. It's like, we're going aground. Brace yourselves. <laughs> the bridge was vaxxed. Oh, yeah, I heard somebody saying that, that too. Uh, they blame the captain. For the accident because he had he had the uh, COVID vax. Oh, what? that must have been it. Yeah, or, or he was gay, or perhaps he was trans, or something like that. Oh, he's yeah. brushing his teeth. I mean, Jesus Christ! It's well, five to ten years to rebuild the bridge, and I'm sure that being an interstate, that they're not going to let take quite that long. But I, I could easily see the bridge being out for two years. Oh, more than that. It'll take well, them two like years say, just to figure they're, out they're what gonna they're going to build. A lot of priority. You know, they're not going to build build the same bridge. I promise you that. No. No. It, yeah, you know. it was kind of weird because uh, Love Girl likes to watch these engineering disaster things and that. So I, I've watched several with her about other incidents of a uh, of a big ship hitting a bridge and bringing it down. The space lasers hit the bridge. There you go. 
it was her fault? <laughs> anyway. Yeah. It's, just, um, it's too damn bad, that's for sure. It's not, has a, anyone, not, a, not a good thing. Has anyone seen the emergency lifeboats that a lot of freighters carry now? Those enclosed orange things? Yeah. Um, yeah. <clears throat> these things look like a freaking ride from Six Flags. That they are specifically designed so no matter how they hit the water, they'll roll over and right themselves eventually. You know, but literally, these things are, you know, dropped to the point that it's like 50, you know, 50, 60 feet between where their ramp ends <coughs> before they hit the water. So they're just like dropped in a dropped like a stone into the water, you know, figuring that yeah, it'll turn itself right in a few minutes. Well, in, yeah, inflatable inflatable life rafts are uh, like uh, Givens life rafts are made so that uh, it will right itself. You know, you get it in the water and it will right itself no matter what. Well, as, as Ember says, it, it was probably engineered to survive a strike from a cargo ship at the time it was built. But nothing as massive as the ships we have now. Oh, thanks, Mage. Yep, there's an image of one of their lifeboats. Well, I haven't seen that one before. That's a new design to me. Yeah, it's a slightly different design from the ones I've seen, but, you know. It looks very streamlined. Like in the yep. 30s. <laughs> well, and obviously that one's running under some motor power. Doesn't, it, doesn't it look like something that came out of the 30s or 40s? I to, to me, it always looked like it was, you know, kind of a early 70s sci-fi. That it kind of like looked like no. a shuttle from Lost I, in no, Space I, or I something. Think, I think, um, I think mm. what we're looking at is that project, that secret project that was put on by the Biden administration back in the 30s. And uh, this is what they came up with. <laughs> Time traveled back. Yeah. Well, fortunately, since they were able to get the call out, yeah, the police were able to uh, prevent more cars from being on the bridge. Hmm. Yeah. Did you see on the, the film the uh, last semi to get across? I knew they said something about there being trucks in the water, but no, I didn't see that. Uh, the trucks in the water were like pickup truck size things uh, for patching potholes and stuff. Yeah. Um, no, there was a, in, in the video, you can clearly see a, an 18 wheeler going across a section that collapsed and getting off of it uh, pretty much just in time, uh, like seconds before the, the hit. So do you folks remember Neko wafers? Do you remember oh, yeah, candy? of course. Well, okay. I still have them. Well, we still have them here. Yeah, well, it's that's the New England Confectionery Company located uh -huh. in Cambridge, Massachusetts back in, back in the day. Yep. But they uh, among the provisions packed in life rafts are Neko wafers. Believe it or not, I used to work. I, I used to share a, a production space with a guy who whose business was to inspect life rafts, and so he'd blow up the life raft and uh, and uh, make sure it didn't have any leaks and uh, and reprovision the uh, the munchies on board. And among those munchies were always Necco wafers, which I always thought was weird because I hate the goddamn things. Oh, I love them. Yeah, okay. but concentrated sugar, it'll help you stay warm a bit. Yes, that can help if you're in, in this situation. Well, and it is true that if you eat two tubes, two full tubes and Neko wafers, that you do gain super, superpowers. Really? Not only for like 24 hours, but that's all you need because you can just, you know, use your feet and kick the boat at lightning speed and you're, mm -hmm. and you're saved. That's why they include neck wafers. Nice. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> no, I was chuckling. 
I'm not seeing any boats coming in and out of the ship channel right now. So, But there aren't any bridges in between the ship channel and where those boats are. Actually, there's one bridge, and it's a draw bridge. And it's a very narrow channel. So, Isn't it incredible that... Um that those guys happen to be there to film it. See, that's why they think it's a conspiracy, too. Those guys were planted there to record it. They weren't told oh, what they were going to see, but they were told to just keep filming no matter what happens. These days, there's cameras everywhere. No, there's yeah. a couple yeah. of guys. You can hear them talking while it happens. Yeah. Okay, so what were they out there for? It, nobody ever said. It was a conspiracy. They were out there because Biden said so. Hmm. So we, yeah, we but I mean, it. I I know there are guys who basically spend all day standing at a railroad crossing with their cameras to film the trains. Yeah. So I'm sure there are people who do that filming the big ships going in and out too. It, it, it what's amazing to me is these these the same folks that are making up all this stuff about the evil machinations of the evil Joe Biden is that they'll say that the guy can't remember what one and one adds up to. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's like, how can you be an evil genius and, and, uh, and, uh, and senile at the same time? Is that part yeah. of the evil genius? It's. Like, no, I, I heard one, I heard one nutcase explain it that, well, you know, in early dimensions, stuff like that, you go in and out of uh, lucidity. Oh, Jesus Christ. Well, these, these are the same people who are worried about the uh, immigrants crossing the border because they're lazy and worthless and are just going to suck off of welfare, but they're going to take all our jobs. So he's only a uh, super uh, evil genius some of the time. Hello. David Page. Hello. How Howdy. Can everybody hear me okay? Yep. Oh, no, we hear you just fine. You? Awesome. Awesome. So how are you folks doing? Pretty Not good. Bad. Pretty good. Better than usual. <laughs> yeah. Um. David here on, on his channel, The Artistic Page, has taken on what I see as being a rather bizarre challenge to spend 100 hours reviewing videos and refuting autism speaks. Jeez, oh, those guys. <laughs> so, so what happened with that was, um, I basically made a video. It was almost kind of like a shit post in a sense. Like I didn't have any real good content or anything to put out. So I put out this video basically saying, Hey, let's uh, all go um, to autism speaks website and flood the website and flood their um, their call centers with calls in April and let them know how much we appreciate them. And you know what? Autism Speaks happens to make most of their money in April. And if people can't get through to their websites or get through to their phones to donate to our dad and uh, it kind of took off like uh, right now i think it's got like 800,000 views <laughs> oh, really <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, like i said it was kind of like a shit post in the set like I, you know what i'm saying it's like oh, just, uh -huh. i'll just throw this out there <laughs> and um people took it serious well so then all of a sudden i get an email from warmer or whatever his name is the ceo of autism speaks and he's asking me what the autism community wants. And I I did not respond to him uh, via email, not directly. I made another video. And I said, ask the autistic community. Why are you asking me? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, I'm an autistic guy, but come on. And um, so then um, Eileen Lamb, which is their media director, she sent me an email. Um, because uh, I hadn't responded to the first one, and I gave, basically gave her the same response. Um, at, I just found out yesterday they made a video where she, being the media director, was complaining about people making comments on the web and giving misinformation. And um, it's affecting the finances and the, the, their ability to raise funds. And she just made that three weeks ago. I made that video about six weeks ago. 
anyway, so um, basically what I'm saying is it's Occupy uh, Autism Speaks and just encouraging people to get on their website. I'm going to put my tablet on there and it's going to be on there all month <laughs> just so they know that I appreciate them. Um, that is the primary way that they get uh, their donations is through uh the website and through phone calls is primarily the website. So yeah, if those unfortunately, if those were to crash or something during uh, April, that'd just be a real shame. Yeah. And just for anyone who doesn't have the background in it, that the autism speaks, um, their mission is to find a cure for autism and they are universally despised by virtually everyone who has autism is autistic. Yeah, but, you know, we don't need to be cured. That's not the help we need. What's crazy is the ableist stuff I found this on their website that's still there today. I made a couple of videos about it, but um, one of them was it was a parent's guide on, you know, what to do when your kid's autistic. And one of the bullet points or chapters was about um, lowering your expectations, It's all, and then the, the next one was learning unconditional love because you're autistic, your kid's autistic, you're gonna have to learn that autistic, that unconditional love. It's I, amazing to me that a source of never ending amazement that people uh, just don't want to recognize that people can be different. <laughs> Okay, I, I, I want to know why parents who have neurotypical children don't need to know about the uh, unconditional love. That was so bizarre. So, but what they were suggesting is if you find out that your kid is autistic, you're not going to have autistic, uh, unconditional love for them, so they're going to teach you. Yeah. And then, and then lowering your expectations wow and then it went into it, um a couple of stories and stuff like that that just was about how awful and how terrible um it, autism was and it just goes on and, and so what i did is in response to them the reason i'm doing the 100 hours is um that was my response just contact the autism community ask them what they what the autistic community needs ask it um and they never did respond, of course. So I decided I was going to do a hundred hours of reasons not to support Autism Speaks. That's my response. <laughs> hmm. So uh, I'm, I, I actually just got off of a stream for that. I'm working on that. Right now, let's see, I've got 85 hours to go. <laughs> Keep at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that's, you know, I... I watch it for a few hours here and there when I'm working on other projects, but yeah, it's hard to sit through a lot of that stuff for very long. Well, let's see here what we have on Wikipedia. Position on vaccines. Autism speaks formally assigned a high a priority to research into the now discredited claim in that immunization is associated with, with an increased risk of, of autism. Of like. Well, you know, the funny thing is, uh, Andrew, oh, no, I, I'm forgetting his name now. But the the uh, doctor who started the whole thing about um, vaccines causing autism, oh. he, he did not mean to, credit, to discredit all vaccines. He only wanted to discredit the particular vaccine that was being used at the time because he was heavily invested in a company that was making a competing product. So he just wanted, oh. I, it was either a measles or a chicken pox vaccine mm -hmm. that he I wanted to discredit so that people would start buying the one he was invested in. So we can credit this to, uh, you know, just your usual capitalist. Yeah, predatory endeavor. capitalism. Yeah. And, and bad science there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, if well, the science he, is good and it sells product, use the science. If the yeah. science is bad and sells product, 
use the bad science. You know, it doesn't matter. The scary thing is, is um, due to my experience with, uh, with the, of course, the, the religious community and so forth, what I have discovered is that Autism Speaks and ABA, ABA therapy, are actually, they fit the bike um, cult model. They fit the model of authoritarian control. Interesting. Which is extremely scary. Well, you uh, think about this. Okay, so you find out your kid's autistic. You take take him to the doctor. The doctor says, oh, well, uh, you know, um, your kid's autistic. Okay, what do I do? Well, we have ABA. That's the only thing is ABA. So you go to ABA. Now, this is what's going to happen. I've never, well, I was through pre-ABA, but I can tell you because I know cults what happens. You get there. They find one thing that day that they can fix, a very easy fix, uh, something like a speech pattern or something, because they want that win. Uh, oh, look, we did this in the first session. Imagine what we can do uh, with with um, eight hours uh, or, of, um, or 40 hours a week of, of therapy, yeah. that, that kind of thing. Now, this is where it, it gets real weird and culty. Now they have proven that it works. What if you say no? You're a very neglectful parent now. Yeah. Because that's that was you know we we we're here and we have proven it, it's uh, evidence based research and what they're talking about is brainwashing works. We that's the evidence based research. We know right. brainwashing. We know behavioral science works. Yeah, we know brainwashing works. We know torture works. That's the evidence base that they're talking about. Literally, um, it's behavioral science, positive, negative um, reinforcement, and so forth. Which is all that what all that comes from. And I'm beginning to ramble. <laughs> yeah, well, and a, a lot of it is the negative reinforcement, the aversion mm -hmm. therapy mm -hmm. that they have taught a child that if they do this you know, there will be some level of disapproval and possibly some consequences. Right. And that's what I was getting to is, is with the parent, what they do is they pull that parent in because the parent, one, they're going to feel guilty for not being part of this thing because it's the solution. And now, they, uh, so they, they, there's a lot of fear there, but then they start doing, you know, uh, 40 hours a week with the kid. Oh, look, now they're talking. Look, now they're um, not in a diaper. Then they become dependent upon ABA because just like God, God did it. ABA did it. My son, um, I was concerned if he was going to go to school in a diaper or in, if he was going to talk. Now, I didn't know he was autistic at the time. And um, the funny thing is, is I was like, OK, whatever. And when it was about five or whatever it was, six, I was like, OK, you, you got to go to school. And um, if you're in a diaper, you're going to be the only kid in a diaper and they're going to give you hell. And it's not going to be fun. And, and he took care of it himself. Now, we work together to get his speech to work. But the thing is, it wasn't this big thing like they're trying to make it out. Like for me, it was just be parenting. Um, but what they're going to do with with ABA is they're going to take credit for it, no matter what. If the child in two years learns to speak and they're going to learn to speak, well, they were in ABA. So it was ABA that taught them to speak. It's, it's God did it. It's yeah. the same principle. And all those same things with the cult being dependent upon the religion or the cult or the idea or whatever and so forth. And that's where you get these... Um, parents that and they also don't um encourage well they discourage people basically from getting involved with the autistic community and i could show you that where they minimize oh yeah well some people some some autistic people don't really agree with it but you know there's always people that make mistakes or whatever and so forth but when you have a system that is proven to cause ptsd in children consistently how many children do you get have to have with ptsd before you say this therapy is not therapy it's doing harm <laughs> so yeah there's all there's all kinds of stuff but yeah it's it's um that's what i've been involved with is dealing with aba 
or excuse me, not ABA, Autism Speaks, basically. That's what I'm doing right now. I have another small project that I'm working on that I can't talk about. <laughs> well, good on you. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty sad when these, it's this phenomenon where uh, people will accuse a group of, of other people of having some sort of agenda when their agenda is essentially just to be able to survive and live their lives. And this other group has an agenda, has really are, is the group with the agenda to That's essentially it. eliminate the ability for set the, the other group mm -hmm. to do exactly that. In other words, live their lives and Christians without that. without being afraid of being of being excised from from humanity entirely uh it it sucks and it's it's just a a, a classic blame the victim situation it's like it, and i'm not saying that I'm saying that basically they're treating uh, people with with different approaches to the world as victims when we're not. Mm -hmm. We're not victims. We're we're just people. Mm -hmm. And you know what I see all the time are people saying, "Oh, gee, isn't that too bad? Wouldn't it be better if if these people did were just like us?" Well, we're not. According to a study, nearly half, 46% of the ABEA exposed respondents met with a diagnosed threshold of PTSD. Almost half. <laughs> but this is good. We, we call this therapy. It causes PTSD half the time, but it's therapy. <laughs> yeah, so you, you, oh, now somebody is marginally like us. <laughs> We've got them, gotten them into a place where they can marginally be invisible to us. I mean, that's a whole thing. Is they just simply don't want to recognize that other people are different. They just want everybody to be exactly the same. And of, Anything yeah. that makes you stick out, well, you know, it's just uh, every, uh, you know, to a hammer, everything's uh, to everything's a nail. Well, and and you're going to solve a problem that doesn't exist. By creating a problem in your, you've got the problem. You, your problem is it's in it's it's living in your head. What is amazing is all those Sucks. years I spent in the atheist community, um, basically debating or watching debates with Christians and so forth and fundamentalists like I was. I now when I see Autism Speaks do this and, and this it, Autism Speaks is not the only there are a lot of um, nonprofits that are scams and cults. Um, it's not the only one by any means. But the thing is, is when dealing with these people, I can see the bait and switch. I can see the uh, I I will tell people. I actually have made videos where I said, okay, this is what, how the cultists are going to respond when I say this. And then I go and make the video where I say that and the cultists respond exactly like I say, because you know what the responses are going to be. For example, the bait and switch where, um, uh, Mark, uh, let's see, uh, was wearing a red shirt today. Maybe he wasn't, um, what, I'm going to say is, well, um, I was, uh, that isn't what I said. I said that he was not wearing a shirt and that he should wear a shirt because that's disgusting. Okay. So what they do is they'll change the argument a lot uh, and then argue about that. Something that is irrelevant. And, and, uh, like I said, you know, twist what the, uh, twist the actual facts and then argue about the uh, fic fictitious thing that they have made up and defend that. Oh, and, and this gets even better. And extreme in level severity were recorded in 47% in, of the affected group. So out of that 46%, 47% had an extreme in case of PTSD from this. And, yeah, uh, it... and uh, David, I put the link of to that study in the private chat. Uh, so if you want to oh, grab that for it. your own okay. research... 
Okay, thank you. <coughs> it, it's a perfect capitalist model. Yeah, mm -hmm. one session gets the parents to commit to two years of therapy, after which it guarantees that the child will need to be in therapy for the rest of their lives for the therapy they got. And, that, and that's like what I, what I was saying. I, even though I've never seen it, you know damn good and well they're going to get that win at the beginning and they're going to get that hook just like you were saying. So that way they have secured that, that, um, their employment for a number of years. Well, yeah, and, sounds like well, Scientology. Would you like to take this personality test? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mark Steezer made this comment. Look at all the brilliant inventors. They're all different and many were autistic. That was something else you had touched on that, you know, if, if they could eliminate all of the autistics before they were born, you know, how many great inventors would we lose? You know, and seriously... Uh, things like laboratory research are dull, very repetitive tasks that they've got to do the same experiment over and over. And for a lot of autistics, this is the perfect job. Mm -hmm. There's been one hypothesis that autism developed you know, from our hunting gathering in time means being able to hyper focus on, on hunting something. Yes, I actually, I kind of have a theory on that. I, I think that we have all. And there are a lot of uh, anthropologists, whatever, scientists that, that believe that autism has always been around since before we were homo sapiens. Okay. And there's yeah. also some belief that it's um, in other uh, animals. I believe that's probably true. Yeah, there's been mention of it in dogs. So what I think is probably it, we have always been there and we were the first one when, when the bushes uh, rustled or whatever, uh, kind of going back to the Dawkins things, we were the first ones because we were hypersensitive to run. The pattern seeking, looking at patterns of game, of, of how things grow and so forth. So there's a lot of assets with the way our brains think that is different from neurotypicals that would be a vital for survival. And so I think that it, it, it's just a normal brain type of human being um, that has always been there. It's just that in some respects, that type of need is different now in our society. Um, I, being a great hunter or whatever, probably it, it doesn't have the same value as um, being a nerd. <laughs> you well, know, that kind of thing. Well, if it is true that we can find it in, say, like, like mentioned in possibly dog dogs, then it's possible that it would have been in, in the common ancestor between humans and dogs or whatever far right. back it goes. So that's, you know, we're talking you know, 100 million years or. Mm -hmm. And I always make the argument that, that uh, autism is a normal brain type anyway. And my, my argument for that is if it has been around hundreds of thousands of years or whatever, then it has always been there. Therefore, it is a normal expectation of the human genome that a certain percentage are going to be autistic. Yeah. Al? Like a certain percentage of us are going to be gay. Yeah. That's a Al? normal thing. This is a thing that I, I've seen more and more of is a bunch of parents only find out they're autistic after one of their children is diagnosed with it. Yeah, what I pretty much say now is that if anyone in your family is diagnosed autistic, even if you have a friend that is diagnosed autistic, it might be a good idea to go look into it because if you have a friend that's autistic, that means that you see eye to eye with those people. Well, <laughs> so maybe you might want to go get it looked at. If your brother or your mother or your or kid, it is genetic. So I think it's just a good idea if anyone it has anyone around them that has been diagnosed. It's just probably a good idea to look at it. Well, like you say, even if it's not somebody who's related to you, because after I got you know, I got my diagnosis for autism and I started talking about it just to pretty much everyone for a while. And uh, six months after I got my diagnosis, the seven of the nine people in my adult Lego group got diagnosed with it. Uh, even this group here, 
um, as, as, through the years or whatever, how many autistic people have we known that have kind of floated in and out of this group? It, half of them? And then half of us are are gay, queer, or whatever, and yep. and um, um, non by non binary trans. It, it it's a great group, but um, a lot of us, and that's what kind of helped me to just. That's why I figured out I was autistic um, by accident. I think was a lot of it was having contact with this group and being so familiar with so many autistic people that it dawned on me. Yeah. suddenly that i was autistic and when it dawned on me i knew i was autistic because i had so many friends and so forth that i never had i never thought of people as autistic or whatever like black sofa or whatever or just black sofa you know yeah um but i didn't i knew they were but it, it just never was there but once it i oh, oh damn i have all these friends of course i do yeah <laughs> That There's it isn't comforting. until you see a lot of the traits in other people that you realize it's something you're doing as well. And see, and and specifically, I've talked about this for uh, being involved with uh, trans people helped me to quote come out immediately. I did not give a flying crap because knowing trans people is like, okay, this is very outwardly obvious and very difficult. This is a way bigger trans art, not transformation because. I make the argument I've never met a trans person that I've never seen them trans into anything. I've seen my friends be themselves. <laughs> Openly be themselves. So I Well the I, well the term comes comes from actually a more of a scientific thing being being in different states. Oh right. Okay. Um, this was it's you know, Mark. just on one side or on the other. It's just yeah, a, so, you know, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's there's comfort in naming things. Okay, yeah, I need to I need to respond to some things in the side chat here, though. You know what what Mark Caesar was saying? Yeah, I I would agree. At least for me, the biggest challenge is social situations. You know, and that kind of uh joins into what Ember is saying here. I've seen a hypothesis that autism is the default mammal brain type, mm -hmm. which in a lot of ways, yeah, that, that makes sense to me. I, you know, I haven't seen anyone else say that, but that most, you know, our species has developed mostly to, you know, what they consider NTs because we've had to develop society. And so I was kind being, of thinking being about able that. To, yeah. Being able to relate with others had become more important than the hunting skills and such. I've kind of wondered if there weren't more autistic people with those types of, uh, we'll say, um, skills or assets or whatever. If there weren't more of us in time when we were more prim uh, lived more primitively, where we did have to look, you know, watch out for the lions or the rhinoceros or whatever that could eat us. Yeah. Uh, well. I I wonder if that's changed now where society, those types of things kind of aren't needed in that respect. Well, we were, you were talking about, you know, other animals having it and a, a great book I've, I've had for some years now, it, it's, it's outdated because, you know, now they don't consider Asperger's a separate thing, but I have this book called all cats have Asperger's. And I have found it to be a fantastic thing for introducing people who know nothing about autism to what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's it, personally, I really relate to that because I keep saying that I was raised by cats, you know, that I, I communicate better with cats yeah. than I do with people. Well, uh, on the, uh, trans, the trans thing, just think about, let's like, say you're standing in front of a line. I mean, so if you have both feet on one side of the line, that'd be the cis position. If you have one foot on one side and one foot on the other, that's the trans position. That's actually where the term came from. Yeah. Hmm. But yeah, I, I do like, Paige, you know, what you were saying about that you didn't really see it as a transition. That you have... You know, purple it, 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 <laughs> with the day it, when when you came out the uh, uh, uh at least with me that it, um 
you were like, yeah, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, and we just went on with the conversation because nobody cared. In the sense, it's a big thing for you and everything else. But we were just friends talking. It's, uh, oh, by the way, you know, kind but, of thing. Because and I love that. I love that, that it wasn't a big deal to anyone who had known me a couple of years. <laughs> right. It's like, okay, so what else is happening? <laughs> you know, yeah. because you were just you. It was just us all friends we we didn't yeah because really all it is for me is like you know trying to get strangers to see what i've always been to begin with mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. the prefix the prefixes are just simply to indicate being on one side or the other of a particular binary that's all I mean, Transalpine Gaul is the other side of the mountains from Rome. Cisalpine Gaul is is the Gauls on this side of the Alps. It's just a it's just a prefix. It's my problem is my problem is is, is the way the Christians try to reframe that. It, that's what or the, what I what I'm saying. That's yeah, what but my the, the, you know that if you want to talk about Christians, they, they've got a lot of weird things going on. I mean, <laughs> after all, it's Easter weekend. You know, some somebody's going to be a zombie for a couple of days or something, and it's whatever. All right, cool, I guess. But I don't um, know. Well, you know, I I fit that too. That uh, you know, in, in, there is a certain state that I used to refer to as being in zombie mode, which is how I was when I, you know, was having, you know, to work work five days a week and do a somewhat normal job, you know, that everything was so repetitive that it's like I was out there and my body was moving around, but there was no brain function. <laughs> it's kind of funny. I was thinking about it the yeah. other day. I was a correction officer for, officer for 15 years. And now that I look back at, at it as an autistic person, of course, it was a great job. There was a routine. I went to yep. work at the, at the same time every day. We would let everybody out to work at the same time every day. We brought everybody back at the same time of day. We had count. At the, I always knew ex, what, it, what was coming, what, what to expect, just like the offenders uh, did. So for me, once I got into the routine, of course, it was real easy. Just don't screw with my routine. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, that's that's why for a lot of autistics, military service works well. Yes. Because they have someone else establishing a schedule and a routine for them. I knew exactly what I was supposed to do in the military because yeah. they they told you exactly what you were supposed to do. Like you were a four-year-old yeah. or whatever. They made damn sure you knew. <laughs> and that's what a lot of autistics need, you know, mm -hmm. is they need things to be clearly spelled out. Because, mm -hmm. you know, if you're just trying to imply something and don't come out and say it, a lot of times they won't get the nonverbal parts and they won't get what you were implying. Mm-hmm. Boy, that is beautiful uh, waves breaking on the ocean there. Okay, Mark Caesar says, I've heard so many people say yeah, that they came out about whatever it was a relief to others because they knew but had to tiptoe around the subject. And a actually, my, uh, my favorite coming out story was um, my ex's ex-husband, when he came out as gay, um, she and his sister had exactly the same reaction of like, you didn't know. It's like every woman who knew had figured this out years before he did. Yeah, Purple, I'm still talking about you. When I uh, told you when I was autistic and I was like, you know, why didn't anybody say anything? And you're like, uh, yeah, uh, I think you were like, uh, I thought you knew. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> we thought you knew you were autistic. <laughs> yeah, it's like your your whole group of friends. It's like we thought everybody knew that. Yeah, we were just being polite. <laughs> it never came up. <laughs> I think that part's hilarious. <laughs> Actually, yeah, my, still my well, my favorite part of coming out was you know when a friend told told another friend that I had come out 
that I was I was trend, going through gender transition, his response was, "Which way?" Which way? <laughs> that mm-hmm. I, I had been live streaming with him once or twice a month for like two years, and he had never figured out what gender I was to begin with. So you should consider that a compliment. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, I, that's my, why that's my favorite one. My that's my beautiful. favorite my favorite response was from somebody I've known a very 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 long time, and I when I came out, she said, "Oh." I've kind of known that since we were in the third grade. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is like, yeah. <laughs> well, and I, I wonder, because, you know, I, I'm not in contact with anybody that I knew before I was like 40. So I, I, I kind of wonder, you know, if maybe some of the people I knew in high school had already picked up on some of these things. Okay, so I've got this, uh, I'll say girlfriend, Um, it, she's a female friend from high school, and we went to church together. Now, there are four of us kids that were really close, two, two boys, two girls. We didn't date or anything, but we were all very, very close. Very, very close. And um, I hadn't talked to her in about 30 years or whatever. She pops up on my TikTok. And at first, I didn't recognize her, but I figured out who she was and we got to talking and everything. I'm supposed to see her here in a week or so. And okay. There's nothing about her that I remember specifically that's autistic, but there's some funny things. Remember I told you about if you should maybe be tested, if you know someone that's autistic, that you might be because TikTok obviously thinks that she is autistic. (laughs) Because otherwise, you never, I never would have ended up on her FYP. <laughs> well, okay, there is a huge overlap between ADHD and autism, mm-hmm. and TikTok was tailor made for people with ADHD for people oh, yeah. who don't have an attention span of more than two minutes. Absolutely, absolutely. So now I'm, I, and like I said, I don't remember any traits about her that I would say we're autistic. But okay, she's a girl. And TikTok directed her to me, which I thought was very strange, <coughs> randomly. <laughs> um, and I have a different name. Uh, I used to be Ledoux, and she knew me by that name. But I obviously, I have enough of a personality, even after 30 years, she knew exactly who it was. Yep. <laughs> so I might get to see her next week, actually. <clears throat> Oh, cool. Uh, I had a thought there and I've lost it. In case you're wondering, the waves are breaking at Cape Elizabeth, Maine. That's, that's, oh, you're looking. Oh, you have to go at... out and fix them? No, 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 don't need to fix them. They're, they they'll, they're breaking <laughs> the way they want to break. So we'll just <laughs> let them be waves as they come in. <laughs> From the southeast, it's good like, that you're so like accepting it. of your water friends. Now nah, you kind of gotta be. They'll do, they'll do what they want to do. Why why can't you save a wave? Why can't you save a wave? Yeah, because they always. Break. Are you a whack? Oh, it was a dad joke. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Yeah, I, I think I think Steph kind of stepped on your punchline, so you need to repeat it. No, uh, I do it once. That's it. I oh. pronounce it a dozen <laughs> tune twice. Sorry, okay, Jenny. so if, if you're at a sporting event and you stand up trying to start a wave, but nobody else does it, is that a microwave? <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> The sea is friendly. It always waves at you. Uh, A ripple if there's only two or three people. (laughs) hmm. Doorknob there. Yeah. um, Doorknob's here. Oh, no. Oh, hey, doorknob. Ember said that to name things is the power that makes everyone a potential scientist. And yeah, that that's really been what my life is all about is 
I always knew there were a bunch of things about me that were weird. And it has all it has been getting names for these things so I could start researching them and have the vocabulary to explain to other people, you know, what Tourette's is, what autism is, what being transgender is. Right. I, I really think... don't know what any of those things are. I know what being me is, and that's always very difficult to convey to people. <laughs> yeah, well, but that's the problem, you know, is just trying to get my family to have even a basic level of understanding that my brain does not work the same way yours does. In hmm. fact, sometimes my brain decides to work in ways that it's not going to tell me about. Like suddenly moving my arms around that I literally cannot stop. <clears throat> Alexithymia is a lot of times the same way. You don't, your emotions are not appropriate to the situation, and you can know that. Yep. Um, but it doesn't matter. For instance, I have a uh, 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 a bunch of these now. But I had gotten one of these and I lost it. And um, my sister-in-law, she she's like, "Well, don't worry about it. We'll just go get you another one." And I was like, "I know." And I was so I was having a major, major meltdown. I was like, "I know it's okay." She's like, "Well, we can get another one." I said, "I know." And she's like, "So it'll be okay." And I said, "I know." And she's like, "Well, then what's wrong?" I was like, "You tell it to the autism because it doesn't care." <laughs> My brain understands that, but the autism yeah. does not care <laughs> because your emotions aren't necessarily uh, appropriate. Oh, Ember, why are so many trans women programmers? Oh, no. Because modern computers require trans sisters? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. We're gonna go down that road. <laughs> yeah, well, we're we're getting a bunch of dad jokes. It started out we had a bunch of them about the sea. But, uh, yeah, well, yeah, nerdy said I think the sea is suspicious. Definitely something fishy about it. So, I was typing yeah. an actual answer. <laughs> <laughs> A oh, line from Fantastics. I, I don't know what Fantastic is, but a play. Please, the Fantastics is a musical by uh, Jones and Schmidt. It okay, was... it was popular. It was real big in the sixties. Yeah, well, I I do like this line because that that was me growing up. That it really never occurred to me that there would be much positive to being normal or to fitting in anywhere. You know, it's just... Stephanie. Think. Do you think we could put together maybe a um, a Zoom version of of the Fantastics? <laughs> oh yes, players, lovers, Fantastics, geese. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I I I would get with the uh, Art Against Ignorance on that. You know, he could help provide you with some music or edit yeah, music like or whatever in... you needed. I'd like to swim in a clear blue stream where the water is icy cold. And go to town in a golden gown and have my fortunes told. Just once, just once, just once before I'm old. I'd like to be not evil, but a little worldly wise. To be the kind of girl designed to be kissed upon the eyes. Okay. I wasn't going to have eyes as the final word there, but yeah. Well, that's okay. We're trying to be polite. Even for off Broadway, you know. Okay. Well, Actually, you know. I believe it was the longest running musical for the longest time. I'm uh, off Broadway. Never made it. Never made it to Broadway. But. Okay, I'm. I'm only going to say that thighs would rhyme with that as well. So. Yeah, thighs. Yeah. But then again, that tends to be my focus with women. So. Okay. It was the kind of play that virtually every community theater did. Because it only has, let's see, the two fathers, Louisa, and the guy, 
and El Gallo and the wall, the mute. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's very small cast and a very, very minimal, minimalist uh, uh, mise en scène. It's a very good, it's a very, very good play. Mm. I can't I remember the name of the a... story it was based on. Yeah, it's I wonder like, if there's a video anywhere that I could check it out. Uh, it's it's The story is, is basically about two fathers that want to get their two children, a boy and a girl, uh, to uh, get married. Yeah. And they go th- through a number of machinations to make it work, and the kids figure it out all on their own, <laughs> believe it or not. <laughs> strange how that works. So yeah. the judge you know, put I, uh, Donald Trump on a gag order. He he, he violated it today. <laughs> oh, already? Yep. <laughs> we knew that wouldn't take long. That man is such a child. God Almighty. Well, you know He's he, an idiot. he invented true <laughs> social because he got kicked off of Twitter and couldn't stand the idea that all of his followers couldn't read everything that he uttered on the toilet. You know, I've been watching like it daily. If you if you just take the little clips, I okay. I'll, I'll just put it this way: you get two clips. Um, you get a clip that basically says something like, "There is uh, Israel is definitely an an issue that we need to look at, and we need to deal with Putin and work through this situation." And then you get, and then you get this. Uh, and they they're they're the ones that are making this country bad and awful and we're going to make it better now because it's it's bad and there's stuff going on and <clears throat> and, and literally day to day it looks like it, it looks the same way what what I see it, I've never seen this before and I was a republican at one time but the Republican Party has zero issues. Zero. Trump does not talk about anything except for basically trying to bully people. And then you have Biden, who's actually trying to talk about some issues, but he's old and I think uh, he's old. slowed down. He slowed down. I don't give a crap. The guy slowed down. He may be a great guy, maybe not. I don't know. He slowed down. And that's the best we got now. Yeah, I. You know, I have heard an argument that makes sense that, uh, you know, people shouldn't allow to run for public office if they're at an age that they're likely to die before their laws go into effect. (laughs) You know, if they can't suffer the consequences of the laws they pass, they shouldn't be making laws. We know not the hour nor the day. I mean, you know, there are lots of people that. Yeah, but you you think about it, you know. If the president proposes a law, it has to go to a committee, it has to go through votes just to get voted on in the Congress. And, you know, then even when they make the law official, it's like, well, it'll go into effect two or three years from now. You know, so it's like from the time somebody gets the idea for a new law, even if it's fast track, it's going to be four or five years before that law gets into effect. Well, you know what, Purple? I'm actually cutting back. On all those things that you did. So what I'm doing is I'm canceling that your program now so that I can claim I cut back taxes. So up your (laughs) I did tax cuts, darn it. I I banned your proposed program. (laughs) Yeah, like uh getting rid of all my free school lunches. Talking about all this stuff that doesn't even exist, and and that, but I've seen that happen. I've seen where the the one side basically said, "Oh no, we're just we're not going to do those programs." So that's tax cuts, programs that didn't even exist. (laughs) They cut, (laughs) so they did tax cuts. Yeah, it was all extra spending, but they were calling it tax cuts. Well, you know, and and we don't need to pay for infrastructure or you know bridge inspections. (laughs) <laughs> nah. or for that matter uh you know safety at sea yeah well, 
Well, last year, I remember it was like, what, three, four years ago where the um, railroad workers were trying to go on strike because of the safety conditions. Yeah. And um, it was like, a, I think it was a, a, actually an executive order or something. Something went through that would not allow them to strike. So they went yeah. back to work. We didn't hear anything. And then all of a sudden, uh, last year, we, I don't know how many derailments we had. Yeah, that was before that they went up to the uh, chemical derailment in Ohio. Mm -hmm. well, let's see here. It takes about three years for the old to pass and get it into effect. Average lifespan of Americans is about 77. So we'll say 70 is the cutoff date. You mean I'm dead in seven years? Well, okay. Why, why can't we, like, you know, make it the same as the retirement age? That, you know, anybody who's past the age that they would have been retired from an industry probably shouldn't be making the laws. It should be the people who are, you know, functioning with day-to-day -day life that should be making the laws. That's total bullshit. Well, go ahead. Expound How about on that. not electing people who are absolutely crazy? Well, can we well, start yeah. with that? You know, can we start with people who don't, you know, who aren't slumlords? <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Well, you In know, the first it, place, it, it, it would be nice to have some, you know psychological testing involved but then you get into issues of you know who is evaluating the tests and such i always thought that a a politician in order to become a politician in the united states they should be able to qualify to be an immigrant and what I mean by this is immigrants have to prove that they understand they have to do testing and so forth to prove that they understand basically how our government works, what the Constitution is, blah, 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 blah. There is not one politician in this country that there are any rules that they have ever had to have heard of the Constitution or how our government works. Yeah, there's not I one. No way. I see. I see. So well, basically, they have to take the same test as somebody would, would have to take to become an American citizen. Right. Yeah. It, so they just have to said. take a civics test to show that they understand how laws are made. Right. And, and so technically, by what I'm saying, technically, a naturalized citizen is more qualified than your average politician <laughs> to take office because they've at least shown that they understand something about the government. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, idea. for example, for example, the constitution, right. To not have a means test before you get elected to office because that's discriminatory. Yeah. Well, okay, and that, that should definitely be part of the test to, to at least show that, you know, what the bill of rights covers. Not a bad idea at all. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, basically, you, you just have to pass a high school civics course. Mm -hmm. Well, not that they you have civics courses put in high school a means anymore. But... Test <laughs> preventing people from getting nominated or, or elected or voting. Yeah. There's no means test that is constitutional, period. That's true. Yeah, it, it would be declared unconstitutional. Oh, Jenny yeah. just passed the test, though. There you go. Well, there was a guy who went to the mega, a variety of uh, mega rallies and uh, tried to perform that test with people. Oh, most didn't get through the very first question. I wouldn't think. So. I wouldn't think. Yeah, so. I'm not I'm sure if I can get the same guy, but I've seen some video clips of that. The number one, the number one uh, question on the citizenship test is, "What is the supreme law of the land?" It's the Constitution. Yeah, most people probably said the president. Or the Bible. 
Now, if somebody but says only the fifty nine dollar and ninety five cent one, one that says Donald Trump on the front. That's the only <laughs> Bible you need. That's the one you need. The one that where the pages uh, stick together and everything. Six dollars is too too much to spend on um, auxiliary to toilet paper. It's... <laughs> yeah, but how do it's it's no damn good because the pages stick together. Yeah, also, I I think that gold leaf might be kind of rough. Yeah, but Could you be. look so pretty down there. <laughs> you know, if, if somebody is golden trying, asshole, yeah, if somebody is close enough to see that I've got a gold leaf asshole, um, yeah, there, there's a problem there. That's a situation well, I should have never been in. Why not? Why not, Stephanie? You went through all that trouble of bleaching the damn thing. <laughs> God damn it! Oh, you God, know? I remember that. Yeah, you're right. God damn it. <sighs> you know. <laughs> the big thing with all of the... Uh... Shit. Yeah. I've got some gold leaf around here. Maybe that'd be something I could... You know, I've never even thought of that. Jenny, it's genius. Marketing genius here in the room. Gold finger. No, that wouldn't be finger. Okay. okay. <laughs> well, afterwards, it could be. <laughs> okay, Stephanie, can can you like you know sell it through my channel? We'll sell a kit of, to gold leaf your own asshole. Gild your asshole. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's not an asshole. That's a gilded asshole. Right there. <laughs> That's a new guy. Wait a minute. Wait just a fucking minute. I got, we'll find some gold leaf here. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on a second. Here, thing. Oh, this is, this is uh, so rich considering in the conversation I decided to, um, well, let's see here. Yeah, it, May just trying to find the button Stephanie uses to just quietly fade out. You know what, Mark? I'm not finding um, the Gideon's Bibles in um, hotels like I used to. Oh, um, God. <clears throat> my, my wife and I do some traveling and stuff like that. And um, actually, like the first, the last four or five hotels, there haven't been any at all, which I just think is me. <laughs> yeah, um, some hotel chains have, you know, have stopped allowing them to do it. Oh, I didn't know that's what it was. Yeah, I'm I, not. I'm not sure what their reasoning for it was, but I I know that some hotel chains do not let the Gideons, you know, leave the Bibles anymore. I used to just steal them. Well, when I was a pagan, I always wanted to replace the Bible with uh, Wicca, the guide for a solitary practitioner. All right. Uh oh. Shit. Well, yes, that'll be what's coming out of the Gilded, but. Okay, Steph, if you just went off and killed your asshole, we're not putting that on the screen. <laughs> Gilded. All right. <laughs> okay, what you got? Oh boy! Composition, very good. Oh my God, you really have some. Mm-hmm. You betcha. Well. I've got enough for the Supreme Court. <laughs> Step right this way. Well, you only you only need to do six of them, <laughs> or four. <laughs> yes, no, six. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, I have to ask why you have that on hand. Do you have to, you know, gild the edge of sails for the expensive sailboats? No, I I used to I used to work uh, at an art gallery for a, a guy who was an artist. Uh, he was an artist and an art gallery, and he did framing, and so he used gold leaf. He, he passed away and left me a whole bunch of <laughs> extraneous bits and pieces of stuff. 
Hmm. So yeah, that's why I have it. But you know, you... it's pretty I'd weird. Like, shit. I'd like to get a bunch of that and and and, and um, go lose my toilet. Well, it doesn't stay very well. well you'd wind up over. getting well. You you'd have uh, shiny cheeks. Let's put it that way. I don't mind that. <laughs> oh, yeah. No. It's not like I hang my ass out or anything. Nobody. Oh, know. you're 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 not going to use it to, uh, you know, to join those uh, flash mobs that do the no pants day. Uh, no, no, mm, that's not one of my interests. I I believe in pants in public. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 also, I suppose that uh, you don't have uh, much in the way of mass transit where you live anyway. So, no. Mm -mm. We well, we do, but it's filled with hay and shit like that. So, <laughs> no proof required for golden assholes. I, I you know, I'd want to see evidence. No, I'd rather steal it from Trump. Yep, mm. that's what I was going to say. Oh. Then it would kind of feel like I, every time I shit, it feels like I'm shitting on top of him. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, it's disgusting, oh but... hey, hey. Now we've got another great product idea. What what if we have toilets that have a picture of Trump printed in there, you know, with his mouth being the hole everything drinks out of? Well, he did that series of um, urinals um, that way that were just him with his open mouth. I saw pictures. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember. I think you posted those pictures on Twitter, didn't you? Probably. Well, they did... For a while there, there was some Trump toilet paper, I think, that, where there, each sheet was imprinted by you know, like a little portrait. Well, maybe I could just get away with painting a toilet 45. gold. Yeah, I was trying to think. Unfortunately, you know, anything that's already glazed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> Uh, yes, that is what should be. It's making America great right there. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Could, you, could you send that to me on Twitter? <laughs> oh. Well, maybe we should go out on that note and wrap up here. <laughs> we could do that. Yeah, and, uh, wrap. Slim, Slim will be starting his stream shortly here, so by the time we're done wrapping up, I'm sure he'll be started. Yeah, and I, I need to, I need to get um, take a nap. I, I'm running on two hours here. Yep. Okay. So, uh, David, you want to? You know, plug your channel, tell people more about sure. what you're doing. Uh, I'm known as the Autistic Page. I'm on YouTube and uh, Tech Talk. Um, I'm doing lives now, and I will be all through April of uh, 100 Hours of Reasons Why You Should Not Support Autism Speaks. <laughs> <coughs> Okay, Jenny, I know you've got something to plug now. Uh, let's see. On Wednesday. Oh, no, this is Wednesday. Sunday. On, on, on Friday, um, I'm doing a, um, a live out in uh, New York. They, they bought me a ticket, and I'm going out there and, and doing a podcast with David Letterman. Yeah. Um, then on Sunday, I'll be back, and uh, I'll be doing the Kentucky Atheist show with you perp at 12 45 yep. central time kentucky atheist is the name and then later on that afternoon we'll be doing um whatever the hell beck call does on his show and that's at uh what the fuck time is that 
chat four o'clock four o'clock central yeah i think four o'clock central and then on monday i'll be well sleeping okay yeah i've got the link here for for the show on the kentucky atheist so i'll drop that in the side chat <clears throat> oh mage beat me to it again yeah yeah, Mage is always quick on those things. Um, I would also like to uh, give a plug for the 31st is the Transgender Day of Visibility. And uh, Ember's got a stream planned for that. What is this? And... Don't forget tomorrow, tune in to the Transpositions with... Well, uh, I was just going to get to you with stuff, so everything you want to plug. Well, that's what I'm doing, because mm -hmm. there was a long pause, so I figured I'd, I'd forward into the breach. Okay. Uh, the, the Transpositions tomorrow at uh, 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central, etc. and so forth. AM or PM. Whatever co coordinated universal time is. Ember and Bree and me and Carly Chardonnay Webb talking about uh, stuff in the news. Good, bad, ugly, ah. indifferent, but, you know, mostly around, uh, around trans issues a little bit. That's coming up for me. Uh, what, I don't know what or, I'm doing. AM or PM? Uh, PM. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got to give the AM or PM in the time zone so everybody can figure out where it, what it is, where they are. Or 24 hours. That would yeah. be 12, 1200, uh, 1200 coordinated universal time. Fuck that. Or zero hour, zero, zero, zero. East Coast, East Coast time matters. That English stuff. Who cares? Well, then you can do the plus or minus for or whatever. That no. way you don't have to do with them. East zero, Coast time zero was... hundred hours. Greenwich Mean Time or coordinated yeah. universal time. I East believe. Coast time seems like they always forgot to set the clocks ahead. Yeah. Well, right now we're minus four in, in, on the East Coast because of. Daylight savings time, I think, still. I don't know. It's, yeah. Remind us. Yeah, no, I just mean that the, the East Coast is always an hour ahead of us. And, you know, that's they've, they've got to get with the correct time. Let's and, let's and let's get with uh, UTC. <coughs> Zero hours UTC. Okay. And that that's tomorrow. No. Um, tomorrow. I, and then... I, I think Chicago should be set as the universal time because, as we all know, O'Hare is the world's busiest airport, so they're dealing with mm -hmm. the most international travelers. And it's got the best abbreviation. O-R-D. I believe that Heathrow owns the busiest moniker, but I'm not positive. Well, he throws in jolly old England, which is not too far from the, grand, from the, from the prime meridian. So let's stick with UTC, zero hours UTC anyway. And on Saturday, um, I'm going to be on um, uh, Women Atheists Unload on Skeptic Haven yep. cool. uh, with uh, Helen Green and Alma Tadaro. And uh, we'll be talking about trad wives. That'll okay. be fun. Um, and apparently. and then on my little channel, I'll be doing whatever I do from time to time, and I never know when I'm going to do it, and neither will you, unless you check out my channel and subscribe to it. It's at SteffiCath, so you should do, definitely do that. And, and and who knows what else I'll do. Yeah, Steph has a habit of popping up for random streams that I don't find out about until they're over. Mm -hmm. I know. I know. I could do better. Oh, and I'm looking forward to... Uh, uh, to an interview with a uh, pickleball player. That'll be fun. She's really hot. Mm. She's really great. Okay. Apparently, we were both wrong. Hey, the, rankings, the rankings have changed in years. That The world's busiest airport now is Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport in Atlanta. Oh. 
Okay. Yeah, for decades it had been O'Hare, but O'Hare is now knocked down to fourth place. Damn. Where's he Nobody goes to the Windy City anymore. Um. Well, the list I had was only the top five and didn't get to Heathrow. Ah, crap. Dak. Why, when I'm looking for something specific, does it cover it up with a window, forcing me to subscribe to the website if I want to read anything? I hate that. Yeah. D doorknob? Trad wife, as useless. in traditional wife, as in 1950s, as in why do you want to waste your life that way? Mm -hmm. Step for what is what we're talking about. Yeah. You know, you, you've got to be well equipped with saran wrap so that you can, you know, wrap yourself in saran wrap and meet your husband at the door after coming home. From work Although the wealthier you are, the less difficult it is to be a trad wife. Because, you, you know, you got butlers and maids and all that yeah if you've stuff. got a maid to do all the cleaning and you've got a chef yeah, coming yeah. in to do all the cooking yeah yeah that, that, that'd be I, I could stand being a trophy wife i w wouldn't qualify but i certainly would be okay with it <laughs> that's a wrap for me what about mage well, I uh, should have a video coming out in the next few days. So I just need to sit down and find time to edit it. <laughs> so that's something to look forward to. Uh, of course, I'll be over on Beck's channel on Sundays. And of course, I'm always here. <laughs> and remember, tomorrow, today is yesterday. Okay, Jenny, I found it for you. On a list of the world's 10 busiest airport, Heathrow rank ranks as 8th. Okay. Yeah, it, it is surprising to me the ones that came in ahead of it. That uh, apparently uh, Istanbul and Dubai come in ahead of Heathrow. Uh, if there's Dubai, some are saying that Heathrow is number four, but I'm not sure what, what list he's looking at. I've got a different list. Yeah, I think that's confirmation bias. <laughs> Love you, Jeff. Yeah, the, the date line was decided on uh, well, while England claim that they own basically the whole world. Uh, no, well, uh, they needed. No, uh, no, uh, um, they uh, needed to establish a meridian from which to measure time for in order to determine Trump, longitude for Trump navigation. Trump said that there were air bases in the Revolutionary War, so don't give me this stuff. Well, yeah. It was it Greenwich Naval Air ba Air Naval Air Station? Apparently, I don't know. No, they, they had were, air bases in the Revolutionary War, but they couldn't really use the planes because they didn't shoot all the pterodactyls until the Civil War. And Trump's going to fix it. <laughs> nobody, nobody else can. I don't know why. Okay, I, I, I really say that after watching the religious uh, fanatics all these years and so forth, literally watching the the MAGA Republicans, it looks the same to me now. And I've never seen that before. And I'm not just talking out my uh, gilded ass. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I've really noticed that that it's very strange because they they don't want to. Um, when you see these uh, interviews, a lot of these they're they're just fans basically, and there's not a lot of thinking or anything that's going on. It's just very strange to see that it's so religious looking. I've seen you know 
political parties where they're very, very involved and so forth, and 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 a lot of confirmation bias and so forth, but nothing like what I'm saying today. It's very, very different. What are we yeah. talking about? <laughs> how how the the basically the the MAGA Republicans how it's very much like a religion now. No, it's a cult. Yeah, it's a cult. But it's weird. I've never seen that happen like that before. Very, very strange to me. Uh, Scummer provided the link for the article he was looking at. So I'll I'll go by that because it appears to be a very recent one. So then he threw his fourth. Maybe the one I was looking at was an older article. I don't know. Well, come on, Scummer, list it. the rest. Number eight, seven, six. <laughs> now that they're all places that nobody goes to, like Denver. Well, you know, I, I'm sure <clears throat> I'm sure Denver got on the list of busiest airports when they were the only state that had legalized marijuana. <laughs> <laughs> Probably true. <laughs> they don't call it mile high for nothing. Okay, well, Jenny already plugged the show on the Kentucky Atheist. That'll be on Sunday. Aside from that, we'll be back here doing this next week. So that's about all I've got going on right now. Are, at, at, at the Kentucky show, are we talking about first cousins again, or what? Bring along your gold leaf. <laughs> okay, well, with that, we will bid you all... Uh, get out of here. <laughs> Everybody have a good one. <laughs> okay, bye-bye, bye, bye, all. Later. Okay.